Every fox body, whether it's in good condition, bad condition, or average condition like this old girl, has loose ends on it. Unless you're one of these gifted souls that has a bubble wrapped car from the day that it rolled off the showroom floor, you got loose ends. I know everybody knows what I'm talking about. This car is full of them. And now, during this first step, resurrection, if you will, that I'm going through on this car, I'm not going to be able to tend to all of them, but I am going to try to get some of the high level ones off the list. So down here on my little makeshift fold out desk, I've got some odds and ends. I've got to get into some drivability stuff with this car. I got a map sensor. I got, um, this is a, a vacuum solenoid for like the EVAP side of things. Uh, I got some gaskets because I want to pull the throttle body off and go through and check the idle air control and, and clean the throttle body out and stuff. Um, it actually, so this is not a mass air car from the factory. It has however been swapped over and I have a feeling that it wasn't done in like textbook fashion. I think it was kind of done quickly and cheaply and it's a long story if you don't know anything about swapping a car over to mass air like you got to repin some of the connections at the ecu and all this stuff so i got to go through and do that um this car if you've caught my very first video you can probably see it over my shoulder this car had a little bit of a hydraulic fluid mishap and now i know what you're thinking these cars have no hydraulic fluid well this one had some in the trunk of it the owner was doing a bit of a parts run for his trucking company and it spilled the hydraulic pail spilled in the trunk so ruined the carpet filled the spare tire well it's all leaking down and onto the tank <laughs> so every time you park this car it leaks oil from the back which was originally a pretty decent head scratcher for me i'm like what is this right is fuel leaking down and it's like coagulating i didn't know anyway and then i got the story and sure enough this thing's just covered in oil so i uh i'm hoping i don't have to pull the tank down i want to try to maybe like pin the tank up with like my tall jack stands and just get the cover off and clean it all and then i can like tend to the in the cab stuff it has been wiped out and i'm sure you ran some brake clean through it but i've got a whole new spare tire well cover and a carpet for the rear of it as far as other little odds and ends oh door handles so you guys if again if you caught my first video uh you would have seen that i changed this door handle out well i found this door handle on the back of the car and i think you could probably see these door handles were painted body color when the car was painted and uh this one's not in the best of shape it was a chrome door handle before and it's flaked well i got new door handles for it um so i'm gonna be flipping both sides out the other one's body ma color matched as well so uh changing the door handles i gotta do some trim restoration i'll maybe take you guys along for the ride for that because anytime i've done trim i've never filmed it and i tend to get in shit from you guys you're like hey why didn't you show us what you're doing anyway sorry it's an oversight by me but i'll take you along for that ride little stuff right i got a a screw kit for like the cowl cover cowl vent um gas cap oh i got a little um i don't know if you guys are like me but i like the look of an led like license plate light and definitely like the look of clear license plate light covers so got to do those anyway Average fox, good fox, bad fox, doesn't matter what kind of fox he got, they all got loose ends, and that's what today's video is going to be all about. Okay, folks, I got to be honest with you, I was pretty puckered up dropping that cover off of here <laughs> like uh i don't have there's not a lot of fuel in the tank but there's enough that this thing would come crashing down um yeah i am definitely flirting with danger this reminds me of one of those like third world country memes where like the ladder's on the milk crate and it's on the forklift that's on the bobcat 
<laughs> anyway, we got her out. Uh, we can definitely clean up the bottom side of this tank, clean these straps up, and I've got the tank cover out here. I'm gonna hit it with some degreaser and get all the junk out of it and uh, tidy her up and then we can tuck that back in and, and move on before these jack stands move on me. I don't even wanna sneeze or fart right now. Okay guys, so quick little tidy up of the gas tank cover and straps. I don't know, right? It's one of those things, you see the, the cover and the straps from the back of the car, so why not shine her up, especially this one. I mean, it was covered in oil and grease and dirt and whatever else. We still got remnants of oil. I mean, in a perfect world, you'd probably peel the tank out and everything and and get up in here with some degreaser and water and everything uh that's the wrong time of year for me to be doing that but uh whatever this is a nice little temporary fix gives things a a nice little look so anyway now we're gonna move up into the top and doctor up that carpet in the rear and uh see if we can't make the inside of this thing look a little better Right, so moving more into the back end of the car here. I haven't spent a lot of time back here. I didn't even realize there was a stereo. I knew there was a fuse under the hood. Didn't know if it was for like a door speaker amp or what, but anyway, looks like it's for a sub. I don't know if any of this stuff's hooked up or what. I'm gonna peel it all out of here so we can get after tidying this area up and making it look a little bit more like a Fox body with a new carpet and a new spare tire well cover. And uh, I also, Gotta change these bad boys out. Okay, guys, a little bit of woodworking going on here. Um, come to find out that the stereo system in this car is a little more serious than I thought. Old school, right? Alpine kicker, uh, both work. So apparently Alpine and kickers are oil resistant or at least hydraulic fluid. <laughs> um, I have not pulled this piece of particle board out of here to see what's going on underneath, but, uh, I'm also not getting paid to do that. So anyway, um, we're installing this and we've uh, reinforced it with a couple pieces of scrap 2x4 I got kicking around here. So it sits nice and flat and actually has some structural rigidity. Um, yeah, I don't know if you guys care to know like how I went about doing that. Anyway, I just... If you've ever heard of Prussian blue, it's uh, a great little tube of stuff to have. You can buy it at your local parts store. You can put it on stuff. And when you're dealing with a blind situation like this, where you're not sure where to mount your, well, whatever. Um, in this case, I just did four dots of Prussian blue on each one of my four corners of my two by fours there. Put my board on top and it kind of gives you a mark, right? Um, it's really good stuff if you are measuring for push rod length or you're trying to see like the contact patch of something. It's more of an engine building or uh, like a machinist's substance, I guess you could say. But Prussian blue, good stuff. Probably buy it on Amazon. If so, I'll have a look. I'll, I'll put a link down below and you can get yourself a tube of that stuff. It comes in real handy when you're working blind like this and you need to find out where something's gonna sit or how something contacts something else. Anyway, um, it's actually what I used to uh, find out where my rocker arm was hitting my stock valve cover in my 92 coupe. And that's where I did my grinding. I'll maybe talk more on that later if you guys are interested in it. Anyway, this is in. Gotta pull the sub box back out. Nice little sub box actually, Kenwood sub. And uh, we're gonna put that carpet in here.
Okay, so carpet is still settling out. However, it is in and mounted. This isn't, you know, real high tech stuff, folks. There's uh, some metal tabs on the back side, um, like on the metal portion of the seat here that, uh, I don't know if you can see it here or not. There's kind of a, like a reinforced plastic on the back side of this carpet and it hooks over on those tabs and then you just screw it into place. Um, I think it's, yeah, like overall, it's a pretty good fit. Like I said, it's still settling down and getting into place, but it does have, you know, some sound deadening in it, so that's nice. Um, overall, pretty nice piece. It's always tough when, uh, you know, you get new carpet and you don't do all the carpet, but uh, anyway, in this case, we just needed the back. So it's a start. Maybe we'll work our way forward in the carpet department. Okay, folks, the trim's off the front end of this car, and before we go any further in the restoration process of this trim, I want to point something out to you. When I first introduced this car to the channel, I nicknamed it Average, the Average Fox, okay? And I took a lot of heat for this. Now, I know that opinions are like assholes, and everybody's got one. This is just my opinion, and I'm going to show you something that popped up while I was removing this trim that leads me to feel as though this car is average. And I wanna preface that by saying, I do not think this car is a pile of junk. It's far from it. It's actually a really good specimen. However, it's had a lot of average things done to it or below average, which ultimately makes it average in my book. However, we're trying to make, take it from average to good or even great. Now, with all that being said, check this out. Whatever jabronis, threw a windshield in this car last, they should be ashamed of themselves because they broke the tabs off of these trim pieces on both sides and how do you fix it? You pile on the windshield snot and you just glue them back in place. What an absolute half-assed way of fixing something. Sure, it gets the job done. And I know from my younger years and high school days, we all did stuff that we're not very proud of. This is absolutely gross okay now i don't think this is what happened but in a perfect world it would have been nice had the folks that installed the windshield let the client know that they broke these tabs rather than just lying their way through fixing it gave them maybe a discount on the windshield install so they could go and buy some new trim pieces or just order the trim pieces themselves and tell the guy to come back in and they'll install them for them right but like using glue like, not glue, like windshield urethane. I mean, come on, right? That stuff in theory, like, sure, it comes off, but I had to cut this one off. It's just, I don't know, terrible, terrible workmanship. And uh, like I say, whoever put that in should be bloody well ashamed of themselves. So th it's stuff like that that makes this car average for me. And I know that's minor, okay? Like, you know the fenders could be rusting off it or whatever but this car's got a lot of stuff like that that's been whack tacked together glued together whatever the case may be and therefore makes this car average because there's a lot of them out there sad to say that have had stuff like this done to them and it's like quick and cheap and easy fixes right but now i'm gonna have to pull all this glue out of there get new trim pieces and fix all this the right way you know i mean you don't have to but you should okay if we're trying to preserve these cars you should now onto the trim yeah look at this right just pile her on right nice fix guys absolute bush league okay process 
take yourself a scotch bright pad scuff this stuff down nice and easy light coats of good old-fashioned trim black okay from sem part number 39143 maybe even give you a link down below if you want to get some off amazon or wherever um yeah give yourself some time to for the paint to flash between coats and uh, don't pile it on too thick and then we'll throw it back on and now one last thing before i get to that point when you're pulling these things off just be careful you don't lose these i think you might be able to get these from lmr now but these little guys go on these tabs and i gotta vacuum the pine needles out of this thing anyway on there and then the trim just kind of snaps into place don't panic when you hear one of these go ting 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 down your windshield just don't lose them because you need them um that's about it and i think i mentioned earlier but i got a new screw kit for that vent and uh oh check this out the remnants of an alarm i wonder what kind of alarm this thing had in it i don't know that i've ever seen the the siren put under there usually it's under the hood but anyway back to work let's get to painting ladies and gents the trim is back on however temporarily it's on okay i pointed out in the video both these two sides are completely had and needs to be replaced this vent is actually quite tired too so if you're ordering those two you may as well order the middle as well maybe even a new set of wipers for it but for the time being it does look completed we'll just circle back to this at a later date now on to some interesting stuff this car has some drivability issues and i'm gonna try and talk you through where i'm at with it all i wasn't sure how i was gonna film it so bear with me i'll tell you a little bit of a story now other than all of the hard parts that have been installed in this car the last and final request from the owner was would you mind having a look and seeing if you can figure out some of my drivability issues with this car like, okay, you know, what are those? Well, he's had it fall on its face a few times, stalling out, uh, rough idle, stumbling when he comes to a stop, things of that nature. So I said, yeah, sure. Like, what's the history on the car? And he's like, well, I don't know. I think it's got a cam. It's This is one of your true blue Fox bodies, right? That like, how many people have owned it before is a mystery. What's been done to it is a mystery. So you gotta play forensic detective. I mean, obviously you could tear the motor apart and figure it all out, but that's unrealistic, right? And non-economical. So anyway, we don't know a lot of those things. It does have a bit of a lumpy idle, so I assume it's got a cam. Anyway, um, I'm just trying to paint a picture for you as to how my mind worked itself through this and, and how I've come to what I think may be a solution. So the other um, big red flag with this car is it is a pre-mass air car. However, it's been converted to mass air, okay? Um, so I thought, all right, let's start with the basics. I hook my code reader up to it and it spits out a bunch of codes. So I've got 22 map out of range, 82 thermactor air circuit, 84 EGR control circuit, 95 fuel pump circuit, 29 variable speed sensor circuit 4102 sensor signal so a lot of these trouble codes are or i think in correlation to the mass air conversion so for example the variable speed sensor circuit so this is a common code that you can have in a mass air swapped car if someone hasn't hooked up the two wires from the ECU over to the variable speed sensor circuit. Um, the other one is the fuel pump circuit. So there's another wire that you can pin into your ECU and run that over to your fuel pump monitor circuit. Okay, tie into that. Um, that would make both of those codes go away. And now if you go through the guts of some of these old forums that are still laying around, 
There's just constant battles back and forth between people splashing their opinions at each other about, well, your car's probably running like this because you mass air swapped it and you didn't hook up the two VSS circuit wires and you didn't hook up the fuel pump monitor wire. And then there's a whole other side of that that says you don't need any of that. And actually me, Chris and Bill Butler talked about it last night on our podcast where neither of them have ever hooked up the variable speed sensor circuit or the fuel pump monitor circuit. Um, so anyway, um, I once I got these codes, what I did, you kind of saw a quick splash of the passenger side floor. I pulled the computer, I checked to make sure that all the mass air wiring was done correctly, to which it seems to me that it is, okay? However, it does not have the, the VSS circuit hooked up, circuits. It does not have the fuel pump monitor circuit hooked up either. And I thought, well, maybe not a bad place to start, okay? So I thought, okay, let's, let's look at doing that. Um, I ran down to my local pick and pull and I pulled a 60 pin harness off an 89 F-150 because inside of here, I'll maybe show you guys these in another clip, but they're these female connectors that fit in the 60 pin. I honestly don't know anywhere to get them other than from a used 60 pin connector. So I've got, well, 60 of them now. No, not quite 60 because they don't use all the circuits. But anyway, I've got a handful of them. I only need three. I'm gonna hook those up. I also have a new map sensor to throw in the car. Um, we're going to try that and see if that fixes our map being out of range because again, my apologies, I did some of this diagnostic work off camera because I didn't even know how to film something like that. Like, hey everybody, why don't you bore yourselves to tears as I try all kinds of things under the hood, not knowing what the problem's going to be. So my apologies, I, I didn't take you guys along for that. Three new wires are pinned into our 60 pin connector that plugs into the ECU. I've ran them up and over and through the dash and ultimately spliced into the fuel pump relay down on the floor. I'll walk you around there. So we're spliced in at the fuel pump relay to get our fuel pump monitor signal. And uh, well, it's kind of tucked away, but anyway, there's an eight pin connector tucked in the kick panel here on the driver's side and that is for our variable speed sensor which I know this is a bit of a long shot but I figured you know what let's just cross it off our list in this diagnosis process to um, see if this is potentially where we're getting our grief so anyway I'm going to plug the computer back in we're going to change out these the map sensor and that solenoid uh, tuck everything back in place and uh, see what we're dealing with here so stand by okay guys hope I don't regret this but the interior is back together computers tucked away uh, <laughs> hope we don't have to get back in there again so under the hood I need to make some sense of this vacuum situation. It's a little bit, I'm not allowed to say the word on here, but I think you know where I'm going with this. So, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna like, essentially I'm gonna start fresh from the tree and just work my way out, all right? Because uh, things have been deleted and re-ran 
And, you know, it's funny, like, I think everybody knows this by now, but, like, vacuum can be one of your largest issues with these small block Fords. If you've got vacuum issues or vacuum leaks, these things, these cars will do very, very, very funny things. So I'm going to see if I can't make some sense of this with what's left here. And I've got a bunch of vacuum line and stuff. So I'm going to go through all this and see if I can't make sense of it. But um, yeah, I don't think any of this is right. Anyway, I'm going to get my, uh, my vacuum map out here and we'll tear into this. Let's see if we can't make her the way she's supposed to be. I think we're in a better spot than we started out. I mean, it is a little bit of a rat's nest. A lot of the vacuum plumbing has been deleted. So, you know, you're kind of making the best out of a bad situation, I guess you could say. But I think we've got it, you know, back to as close to OEM as possible with what I had to work with. All right. So... Anyway, the new uh, map sensor's in, the EGR VAC solenoid is in, and uh, I think we're ready to hook the battery up and, and shake this thing down. So I've been getting in a little bit of a bad habit of making these videos like massively long, and I know that probably hurts my, my viewership because people are like, oh my god, I, I've barely got five minutes to commit to watching a video, let alone half an hour 40 minutes so i think i'm going to cut this one off here folks i'm going to tidy all this stuff up and uh i will be shaking this car down today so maybe i'll do that as a bit of a part two the uh test drive shakedown type thing come back hook the code reader back up to it check for leaks right We've, i still haven't driven this thing since doing the rear brakes or the power steering so uh we're going to be shaking a lot of things down so if you guys are interested in following along with that um i guess check out the next video so thanks so much for watching guys i really appreciate you i hope this video helped if it did please share it along that's why i do these videos to try and help and give back to the fox body community i love so thanks a lot guys i'll catch you on the next one take care bye for now